Welcome to another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on an Einen Fürzig year old, a 41 year old from St. <laughs> Petersburg, Russia. He is a legend in Germany and Israel. Spielen as an ice hockey profi, ice hockey spieler in Deutschland for Dreizehn Jahre or six hundred and fünfundneunzig Spielen. <laughs> Okay. Played 13 years pro in Germany, lacing up for 695 games. One season with yours truly with the mediocre Falcons of Helbron. He then seems to have become the goat of Israeli hockey in domestic play, ran a muck and captain hockey club Batyam, and is a two-time Israeli league champion, once putting up 16 points in five games played en route to the title. Also led the squad to the Continental Cup three times. In international play with Team Israel in the World Championships has the most points by a D-man, named the top D-man in the tournament, and been named the top player on the squad, and has two bronze medals, and one gold medal vaulting Israel up a group on the world stage, and is a pioneer of the sport in the country. Welcome to the shed, Mikhail Kozhevnikov. Thanks a lot. Hey. Too, much, too much honor. Too much, man, too, too, too great list. to see you again, man. I didn't know you did all Me that too. stuff. <laughs> what, else, what else? What else? When, yeah. Enjoying life. That is awesome, know? man. I haven't seen you since I get into how we know each other. I haven't seen you since 2013 in Hellbron. That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. It was my last year, actually, yes. Yeah, so you didn't play the next year. How did you decide that? Because you only played, it looked like, 28 games that year. So was that your shoulder? I can't remember. Uh, no, no. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it was my groin. I ripped the right. uh, uh, abductor. I don't know. Yeah, it's an abductor. That's how you call it, right? So I ripped it there at the beginning. And then and then uh, in the later season, I, I, I got back. Yeah. I got back on the ice. But, yeah, no. It was not only because of that, obviously. But, you know. Uh, just uh, more, more thinking about what's going on. You know, since that I've I've played already for 13, 14 years. So you know, I was just just thinking. It process. was time. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I was thirty one. To be honest, like when I think back, it's the best age for a demon. You know, like when you like you know you know, you have you have the experience, you have everything you need. You yeah. know, so you can only perform. You know, but for me, for my personal experience it was like yeah maybe a good good time to change i don't regret it it was good because i have great 30 40 years so what when you stopped playing what did you stop to do what are you doing now well yeah well uh, I, I right now we have uh, my family we run the uh, actually there was one of the reasons also we run uh, around the company uh, which has nothing to do with sports but we run the company what, what's uh, the company do, it's uh it's uh we do like healthcare we uh, we treat we treat elderly and the health and um, sick people so okay. we have uh we have home cares and uh, and and uh, uh and, um, and and day cares uh, so how big of an operation are we talking how many employees well, quite a lot like we're not so huge but uh, we have like around 40 45 employees mm. that's enough to do um, so what do you got for a family? Who's over there? Who can I hear in the background? <laughs> my wife, Lena, and uh, my daughter, Mia. And, uh, and you might you might hear my dog barking, but yeah, but he doesn't hear a lot. He's 14 years old. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hi. Uh, What's your name? Mia. Mia. And sprechen Sie Deutsch or English? Deutsch. Yeah. Ich sprechen ein bisschen Deutsch, aber ich... Forgess and feel. Oda? Aber gut genug. Aber gut genug, huh? Ich spiele in Deutschland for six years. In my last year with dein father. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Yeah. Yeah, super. <laughs> so when you say you stop playing, though, then yeah. all of a sudden I see all this Israel stuff happening, man. You look like a legend. And you know what's funny is I've had a couple guys on that have played in Israel now. Phil Bushbacher and Jesse Michelle, who are legends over there, right? Yeah. And now I see you're like the real legend. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, 
it's 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 really an interesting thing uh, to be honest with you. Like, well, first of all, you have to realize that. Uh, um, okay, with I had a couple injuries in the end. That's also was one part. Like starting off the company on one hand with my family, which I want to jump in and not being you know like fifth wheel. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, with forty. It was that so, time of your uh, life I to quit, get I involved quit. fully. Yeah. Of course, yeah. So I quit that. I had my I had to take care of my body and my injuries because the last yeah, of course, was also a factor. And uh, the last years of my pro career, I had a couple. So like you remember, it was around thirty games in the last season. So uh, it made me it made me think. Yeah, it made me think uh, how how far and what's gonna be, where I'm gonna be, and um, yeah, and. Um, my but my dream, like my very first interview, pretty much similar to that one, is was when I was eighteen because I have Jewish roots, and uh, when I was eighteen, I was asked on the radio uh, what what I think would be cool thing in hockey, and I said with eighteen, I still have the stage, and I said honestly, like uh, I said, uh, it would be cool to race to race some hockey in Israel, uh, and it was just a maybe it was just an illusion, a vision, I don't know, but. Um, when you're a pro professional player in Europe or somewhere, you have uh, with the, you have to go with the IHF ru uh, rules, right? You, I, I couldn't couldn't play it, uh, any team or join uh, Israeli hockey. So uh, after I quit, uh, it took me a while, like a year or two or something. And then I thought, okay, let's see what they have there. What's going on? How do they play hockey there? What kind of hockey? What leagues? What's the structure and all the stuff, you know? So I got in touch with some people and... Uh, Pretty quickly, was a, it became a great uh, adventure. Yeah, and it seems like you've you've had some great experiences, and you've got to really live by getting to do that. But like for me, then um, this Jesse Michelle just came on, and he went over there. I think it was it was just this year, and he raved about it. And he said that Israel hockey is going places, and he said he 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 felt so great that he could be at the the front end of it. But like. You've been do you've been doing it since 2014-15, man. <laughs> yeah, it's lots I've seen. Yeah, and that's uh, that's where I see the difference between uh, you know it's still seven eight years, so you see already really some good good steps in the right direction. Lots of things to do, lots of stuff. You know the mentality, the stuff. But you have to imagine, you know, it's you know there is desert, and all of a sudden you see rings, you see guys, you see passion, you see guys going at any time. Is either it's seven o'clock in the morning when I call my friend, where are you? And he's like, I'm, I don't have time. I'm practicing. Well, like, oh, what? So they drive through a whole country and uh, they, they practice at night at 11 or something because it's the only ice cream they can get, stuff like this. So, so how many, people. how many rinks would be in Israel? Well, right now they have, uh, okay, there are rinks and rinks. You have to understand. Uh, but uh, if we go from, from the from normal rings, which we know, they have um, the normal size. There is three rings. They have a new arena right now since uh, two years, I guess. Is that the uh, one in Tel Aviv rings. or whatever? It's close to Toledo and Netanya. What they have uh, two two good normal size rings, and they have in Metula, the Air Canada Center, which is very old uh, and uh, uh, but it exists for a long time. And they play the usual games in playoff time because of the normal size. And they have a couple uh, smaller rings and um, different cities. So the so guys and, and, and young hockey players, you know. Uh, I heard of the Air Canada play. Center in the Max Beerbrier episode. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Max Beer, yeah, yeah. We never met with him, but uh, I know a lot about him and probably he, about me. And uh, yeah, he, he's supposed, he's always in touch also with the Israeli Hockey Federation, yeah. It's a, it's a small world to get talking around your shed, eh? <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> and I didn't know anything about Israel. I didn't know anything about Israeli hockey. And man, I'm a fan. I heard the people running the league over there are, are shed guys. I hear they're great guys. So keep up yeah. the good work over there, right? Yeah, well, they will, they will, they will. Yes, they have, they have lots of goals. So are, it's said that you played in 2022-23 for the Stars of Israel. So you're still not retired. Come on, I mean, that's something. Um, yeah, it was a great trip, but you know, like. So what is it? You went nothing, over there. Nothing, I'm still, I'm still for sixty hours in the office, you know, a week. So yeah, it's not like I'm a professional player, but it's a great adventure. What you talk about was the was the, was the thing we were invited in Florida, right? It was in Florida. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't even know that. So um, it's it said was, uh, played against Egypt, Chile, Venezuela, exactly. Mexico. Exactly, exactly. In Costa Rica, or was it? No, Puerto Rico. Yeah, there was a was a it's it's, a, it's Latin American Cup, which takes place every every time at the facilities from Florida Panthers in the, in the, in Florida in Fort in uh, Fort Lauderdale. So we were invited the first time. We were invited there. To, you know, it was it was a great experience. Wow, that's uh, sound, that sounds like a blast. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's pretty cool. Actually, in the, in the three weeks, there is another one. Uh, and you um, do it with your brother too, right? Yeah, we do it together. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that's fun. Of, that's fun. We 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 never used to play together in the professional uh, or professional time, so now we enjoy it a lot. Yeah. And in three weeks, there is another great uh, event in Israel. By the way, um, the legends um, uh, from uh, like former legends, you know, most of them, like Fetisov. Slava Fetisov is doing that. He has his own team, own brand, who's traveling around the world to, you know, to promote hockey. So he's been he has been already to Israel. There was an event, and now in three weeks there is an upcoming event. But this time there will be also the ex, uh, the former NHL players who are gonna make are coming team. to Israel to play. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's cool. That can get a buzz going and get some more kids playing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why that's why they do that. They want to, you know, make some promotion, make some good things, uh, grow the game. That. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, of course, that's more. It's not. There's no hitting, not nothing like that. But it's lots of fun when you stand on the ice with such guys. You know, like, like um, I just heard a couple of names, but uh, who's coming? So, from? will you be also, going to play in that? Yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah. You're going to Israel again. <laughs> yeah. 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 What a legend. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it looked like you and your brother, though, are kind of coaches now, too. Is that true? That picture, you're one of your poster pictures standing behind the bench yeah. like coaches. And you guys, by the way, dress very fashionably responsible. Nice outfits. You are Thanks. way more fashionable than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I look at my brother, so I always find the right suit, you know, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great. It was also a great experience. Um, well, my brother is coaching for real, also here in Germany, um, under fifteen, under thirteen in Dusseldorf. Oh, really? Because his uh, his boy is playing. Obviously, I have a daughter, so I'm kind of you know in between of uh, you know uh, family and uh, playing hockey. But coaching is not so far. But this one was. Uh, yeah, actually, my brother became now uh, his fresh uh, fresh made uh, under eighteen uh, national coach. He's going to uh, Iceland in in two weeks for for, it, for Israel for, the, for Israel for Israel. That's that really picture, cool. Yeah, that picture you 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 talking about is yeah I like that a lot too. Uh, there was the last Maccabi. You know, have never you've heard about Maccabi, right? That's like the Jewish Olympic Games, right? I don't know if I heard about it or not. I might have. Actually, I hear a lot about a lot of stuff now. <laughs> well, not many people do it, but this is the third biggest event in in the world. Well, I saw it. that's the same one. Then you send another picture of you with sunglasses on inside, which I'm curious about. <laughs> but you got medals on, and you you have a selfie with the crowd behind you, and that is exactly. a huge arena with a lot of fans in it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was sick. There was a final game, uh, U.S. boys like uh, U.S. team against Canadian team at the Maccabi. It was just uh, it just happened in July last year, and. Um, you know this. Uh, the, there's a hockey tournament, obviously. They built in the the, the arena in Jerusalem. They built. It's a actually it's a basketball arena. You know, like Israel is big in basketball and stuff like that. But they built it to a hockey arena for the Maccabi. It's the second time already they do that. So and they have one big arena. tournament at that arena. That's for basketball. Exactly. It's a great experience. So. Just uh, my brother and I were asked to to coach the, a new. There was a new project, a new team. There were US guys, Canadian guys, Israeli guys, and Team Europe. So a bunch of guys, two, three guys from a European countries made a team, and we were about to coach them. So, and we won. Uh, we, had, we had a great group of guys, and that made us, uh, yeah, that brought us the success of the bronze medal. That's oh, that, that's really cool, man. <laughs> that was yeah, a lot of fans. Great experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, no, unreal. It's a good hockey, like great, great, great speed, great hockey. There are lots of college guys, you know. Well, I Some think it's neat that you've got to stay in the game, right? Because I honestly didn't know what happened. When I reached out to you, I just saw you, you know, on the social media there. And I just saw something you put up. And I'm like, I wonder what he's doing now. And I sent you a message. You want to come on the pod? 
And like the research team had never got hot. I didn't know about any of this, man. And it's crazy that you've done so much cool stuff since I've seen you last. And I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> you know, when you ask me, I, I tell you, no, if you don't ask, you know. No, I, I know. But like, I, I was just going to have you up because of the career I knew you had in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> which was not so exciting eh? <laughs> well it's i i i just like having chet guys on too though you played almost 700 pro games in germany that's a lot of games man i agree with you but you know what i really uh i really for myself for myself i thought i quit i quit like uh, pretty pretty early like yeah. we said but you could uh, still play hockey is still hockey is still a big part of my life uh, you know i didn't do it for so, like so many years I started with three four whatever like everyone I don't you know you just don't put it beside so I wanted to have yeah. and and I really hope I can I do what I can do to to keep it in part of my life well and that's like I'm coaching so you say you have a daughter now she's younger than mine uh mine's eight now but I'm coaching the under nine girls team in town here and we have our first hotel tournament weekend coming up this weekend. So I can't wait. Um, I got a bunch of little girls that are becoming hockey gals. And I think that a hotel weekend away together as a team, they're going to, they're, you know, if they're drinking the Kool-Aid, they're going to be hockey people. And I'm going to do the biggest belly flop they've ever seen. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah. I've been trading my whole life for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You got to enjoy it. You have yeah. to enjoy everyone. Okay. So. Like we still have so much to talk about, but so you are in Dusseldorf. Yeah. We live yes. in Dusseldorf. And yeah, is yeah. so is that where you're from? Like would you consider that where you're from? Yeah. Well, yeah, we all live more than whatever. That's where I came always back from seasons, whatever, wherever I played. Okay. And that's where we family, my family decided to stay, yeah. But you're born in St. Petersburg, Russia. Yeah. Yeah. And that then your family moved to Germany? We moved to Germany ninety two, and uh, since that, yeah, we okay. moved ninety two to Germany. So I'm old. I'm thirty one years old. Uh, thirty one years in Germany. So you know, how old were you when you moved there then? Like a teenager? Like nine, nine. 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 I became. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you've Pretty basically young. grown up there. Um. Okay. Um. So let's see here. So then you get a German pass because you basically grew up there, right? That's how it works. How do you get I a German? The no, I, the, 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 there were a little different rules. I finished school here, and then after that, after I had to finish, finish school. school. Different rules at that time. Okay, so how did you get into hockey? Well, I uh, if if start at the end, uh, kind of. Uh, did you play I, in Russia? Well, yeah, we played with Scott St. Petersburg. We were like, uh, yeah, there were lots of teams obviously in St. Petersburg, but we made. We're at the at the the real deal kind of. It was tough to get in there, but uh, yeah, my brother and I we went uh, we played for the what is it from seven to ten we played for Scott and Petersburg, and then when we moved we tried tried to find some teams here so we switched we were in Duisburg Radingen and then we finally ended up in Krefeld which was more serious more professional good, yeah good level so they played at the top level of the junior teams of obviously and then. And then there I got my, with 18, I got my, I signed my first contract. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get into the German stuff later. I still got to stick with Israel. Okay. <laughs> I still got too many questions. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so seeing it grow though, from 2014, 15 to winning gold in 2018, 19. So when you guys won gold, that must've been a special moment. Yeah, actually it was. Actually, is it, it is it a round robin to win it, or did you get to play a final yeah. game for it? No, no, obviously, no, no. There was Division Two, uh, uh, Group B, and uh, I don't, I don't know. I think even till Division One, they play also round robin. I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, we we played you no know, usual. You play, you have a tough week. You play like five games within seven days, so. Um, we had a pre-game. We had a little uh, couple of days before we met there. We had a good group of guys. We had a great coaching. How you much know, do Bobby you practice was... before? Me myself, or you mean how much we practice as a team? Both. <laughs> well, I prepare myself. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, you want to be good when you're going to play we for always, your country. We all yeah. get older. I skate. I skate with the Dusseldorf. We have a good hockey community here. Yeah, lots of guys come from in the stay in Dusseldorf because it's a nice city. So we have played and we played in Dusseldorf. We have a great, uh, so we have a good uh, quality of practicing here. So actually, once a week, I always 
then uh, when it comes down to the world championship, I, I go with juniors, so I have to get some ice time. And we have like three, four days before the world championship, we meet with the team, the Australian team, uh, at the place, wherever it is. And so we go from there and starting, you know, uh, practicing together. Like last world championship, uh, we had a nice um, train camp in, uh, in Slovenia before we went to Croatia. Because it's their one hour drive time, you know, but yeah. so it's so you it's, have a little yeah. training camp all together and get to know exactly. each other. But it's a lot of the same guys every year, too, right? Yeah, it's uh, well, actually, since 17, many guys you have a, you have to see it. Uh, there are problems, or like, like kind of problems always if you, if you work with young guys, which uh, they, they skip three years because they all everyone is, has to go to military in Israel. So obviously, when once you're like 18 or whatever, they they, you have to go and everybody knows it, but then they're 21. And so they have to see how they, uh, how they keep their shape for three years to get back. It's not, there are more and more quality Israeli hockey guys, like uh, hockey players, young players who come out. But uh, either those guys are go to college in the uh, United States or Canada. And so they join the team there and then they join the world championships or they don't have this chance or the, this opportunity, so they try to keep their shape there. And then you, you you see so many guys, like say like five to ten guys, always stays the same, you know, yeah. because they, they probably finish their college, finish the military, you know, yeah. and then, now they can always come. Or uh, so, and then you have another line, let's say, so you have always like three lines, decent lines, which you can make. The fourth line is there's uh, usual young players, really young players to collect the experience. And then, they, yeah, so that's how this that so thing comes together. My thing I got asked about, because that's Max Beer Breyer talked about this, about the military three years, right? Because he got sent yeah. to jail for yeah. not doing it. So, I mean, they all know they have to do it 18 to 21 when they, they live there, right? But so you have your past. Was like when you fly in, do they ever say you got to do three years of military? Well, I'm I'm told. So once you once you're old enough, then you wouldn't have to do it if you go to get your passport. If I, uh, you, your question is uh, at so what, is what Max at Max? Skip? So Max had, when he went to Israel, they told him he had to do the military, but he was trying to be a hockey player, right? And he didn't want to do it or something, right? So yeah, he ended up going to like military jail. Yeah. Me guys, but he was younger, right? Like how old? Yeah, oh, was right. He? he was the age that they have to do it. Then I guess, eh? Yeah, I guess so too. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly right. Story, so then but... I guess they don't play hockey for three years. Then, right? No, not they're trying to find a solution. So it's like the sports company, kind of, you know. So they go to they do the stuff they have to do, the 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 manager stuff, and then they get get off or practicing and stuff like this. You know, they try. For good players who's needed from the federation, from the hockey federation, to try to find solutions. But it's yeah. not. We have to. See, you have to see that uh, uh, this is a special case where a country is not. It's not obligatory military. You know. Yeah. It's, they, well, it's, it's different, it's, right? It's a different life that that like you have to exactly. do it for three years. Like you don't get and to it, choose. And every and every yeah, but every the the army is needed there. Right. So it's not like and it's an active. It's an active army. Right. It's not like, you know, I just, you do theoretical parts. So, and everybody knows it and yeah. And everybody's got to be together in it. Yeah. 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 They have to, go, they have to go. Um. So the other thing then, Um. well, did you guys have fun then after you won gold? Like, I know it's not a oh, final yeah. game where you win it, but you must have had some fun, eh? <laughs> yeah. I didn't send you that pictures actually. I regret it now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a great time. It was uh it's not it you can still send that no. picture you can still send it lee hasn't i just sent lee the poster pics today so you got time yeah we'll get it on all there. right all right all right all right okay i'll, I'll find it that was a great uh great time Where i just want to mention we also all great uh, coach we had bobby Olik as a coach bobby Olik uh, was your coach eh yeah it's number yeah. 16 for the new jersey devils yeah, what a player. yeah, it was a great experience to work with him um uh, yeah and uh meet him there where did and, you win um, where was that in Mexico City. Really? <laughs> the experiences you've had, eh, for playing for Israel is so cool. <laughs> I tell you. It's, I'm it's a big amazing. Israel I'm, fan now. <laughs> you should be. It's uh, joined in, in seven weeks. There's World Championship in Madrid. 
Oh, that's Come. cool. <laughs> the very so you're going to Madrid that. in seven weeks too? Yeah, why it's not? Hockey. <laughs> right. It's hockey time. That's hockey, baby. <laughs> That's what's fun. That's, That's what's fun. fun, man. Yeah. yeah but it's, it's just right. But it was, uh, but just to mention, uh, yeah, it was a great time. We had a great, great uh, group of guys and we won, we won the, the games we needed to win against uh, good teams at that level. And, uh, yeah, that's um, and then Corona came, and so we were basically Israel was for three years, uh, how you call it, uh, the, the champion, the, the champ, gold medal right. for three yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, usually it changed every year, but right. thanks to Corona, due to Corona, we were three years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but now that you go up a level, it'll be harder, eh? Yeah, definitely. But you know what? We have, uh, like I said, uh, we have a couple guys to finish army. Who come back now? Who couldn't join us uh, last year? And uh, we have uh, we have a good coach. We have uh, uh, the right guys, I guess, uh, coming and be able to come and join the team. So I think cool. we have a good chance. We have a good chance. Well, this is other thing I thought was neat when I looked at who you played to win to get promoted. You played Georgia, and I've had on guys recently where the research team gets hot and I see Georgia flags beside the players. And that's cool that they're playing hockey in Georgia too. But then you also played North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Twice already. I didn't know they Twice had a hockey already. team. Yeah. You know what? I can tell only, only good things uh, because I really, I really was, uh, I was excited to see them too. But I saw that joining the tournament, the very first one in New Zealand was in 20. 2017 in New Zealand, uh, that was my first time I played in North Korea. Great guys. And they're giving the best and they have really decent players there. I mean, really, really good things. Of course, you know, like the depth of the teams is different. But once you step on the ice, the cool thing is it's about just hockey. hockey. Yeah. It's just hockey. It's just a sport and you you just enjoy it. And uh, it was good games. It was good games. So you also went to New Zealand. <laughs> Wow, cool. So you New, New Zealand, yeah, well, Mexico. You get the right guy. They have like a bunch of guys. Uh, they have like 20 guys are right-handed. The first time I met, went to the ring, I'm uh, watching their practice. I'm like, what? I've never seen so many guys at once who are right-handed. Maybe they only give them right-handed six because that's maybe because that's what they got. That's what they're, they learned with. Two. I'm sorry. Maybe they just had right-handed sticks. So that's how they learned. I don't know. Yeah, they, I heard different options about opinions about uh, why why that is. Maybe because they're the very funny one is because they're in the south of how you call it. So. <laughs> oh, the southern of the it's, equator. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's the other way. We have more lefties. They have more righties. <laughs> like the There's toilet the flushes the other way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My guess is they only had right-handed sticks, but I wouldn't. I don't know. I wouldn't. Don't Probably. want to be. Real. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> that's that's cool though. Um, that's cool. You got to play them. That's another life experience, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's also, you know, like place, place you, you, I mean, you fly one direction with stopovers, you're like 33 hours. Like, I mean, further is only Bora Bora. Like you don't, it's not like you go to your wife and say, let's go to, no, let's make a vacation to New Zealand <laughs> Yeah. because you don't go for a week to New Zealand. I mean, <laughs> a week in New Zealand, <laughs> you fly for two, almost two days. Yeah, but it's 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 how you know, like like that's why what's so exciting. Like sports get us to places where we don't expect us to be, kind of. Absolutely, it's like me speaking German with your daughter today. Is like I there's yeah. no way I would have spoken German if I would have wouldn't have played hockey, right? And it was good. Um, but I never I I never would have been to Germany or Europe probably, right? Like I probably never would have gone if I didn't play hockey, right? That's definitely. I, I haven't mean, gone very far since I stopped. <laughs> No, but it was great six for you, uh, six years for you too, right? Oh, I was, and um, I loved my time in Germany. Um, yeah. And like, I did want to stay when I was asked to kindly leave. <laughs> but I, when we were done at Helbrod there, um, I, like we did, we underachieved for the team we had. Um, they did put together a good team that season. A lot of goaltenders got injured that year on us. Um, yeah. We had, uh, but then like when we weren't playing well, and then they're bringing in the Slovak imports and, telling us imports that we're going to start getting health bombed and getting healthy scratched if we don't play good. And then all the stress starts. And it's like, I say, it's like I, when teams are teams is when you win. I don't think teams need extra imports. I think you need the amount you, you need and you should be a team. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
It's but, not, but, I'm totally yeah. with you. I'm totally but then we got put out first round and the coach that we lost for who I do like, and he's come on the podcast before Rico. Uh, I understand his side. He got fired as the coach and they made him the GM <laughs> and then he got to pick the imports for the next year. So he wasn't having us back. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad, bad timing, bad timing, <laughs> bad time. But then again, maybe you should just be better and win. Right. <laughs> Where did you go after, actually? I went to Denmark, and we won the championship the next year. We won the well, Danish championship. Goals. Did you score 50 goals again? Again? <laughs> no, no. I, I I, did well, though. I was second in the league in scoring. Yeah, good. But they, then, so. then, they, then they didn't ask me back either. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, So then I went to Cardiff, and uh, I had a blast. Oh. I loved it there. And then, then my knee yeah. went again. Um, my knee went okay. the second year there, and then it was over. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But yeah, fun that times comes. though. Yeah, bodies yeah, break yeah. down, right? Especially when you don't take care of them. <laughs> so you play Denmark, you play. It's great. Right, and I would have never done any of that stuff if I couldn't play hockey well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um. Okay. So, how how is Georgia at hockey? Because I see, I'm just curious. Are they pretty good? You know what? Uh, what I heard of um, uh, they to last time I was 17, I played them, so they uh, stayed at that level so far. But um, they have a couple of decent players right now, yeah. So they got strong. That's why they also they moved up. Uh, not only that is the only reason, but they moved up. And I guess it's going to be tough to play against. Well, I find it interesting too, though, right? Is I saw Croatia when the research team got hot. And I looked at their roster because I remember when they had that pro team playing in like the um, Austrian league. And they had yeah. all these guys with Croatian passes that were playing in that league. And then I looked at the roster nowadays and every player was from that one town. And that's got to be the only place with the rink, right? So every player on their team was from that one town. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I mean, I, uh, sometimes, sometimes it it's uh, you, what team is it? It's also like this. Well, like I'm curious well, actually, how many actually, rinks are in actually, Georgia, actually, right? Like there can't Georgia, be many. No, but, but also, like last year, we played Netherlands. Like, like half of the team are coming from Tilburg. That's right. Oberliga team. The they Tilburg join, trappers. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they, it's you know, it's kind of interesting. But the, when it fits, it's it's okay for the national team. You know, and they have a decent. I I'm really excited how they're gonna be, how they're gonna perform on the the upper division. Yeah, no, and once these towns start getting hockey and heart, hockey starts getting into the community, and then you'll see the kids start playing because they want to see. They want to be like those guys that are from that town that played pro, right? And then, or they'll see imports come over and play, and they're gonna to want to be like those guys. And then all of a sudden, they become hockey people. And then the next wave could, you, there could be some players from these towns, right? I mean, ten years is not so long, so much time. No, it can it's change. not. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it seems like, but it's not. Yeah, exactly. So it can change, and it can bring some fresh wind, definitely. So, okay, still in Israel not going anywhere yet you also you play for the country but you also have won the championship in israel two times so do you go over there and play like the season because it looks like you only go over and play a couple games and win championships no, no, we played we played most of well most we, we played i don't don't ask me but it was a uh, was lo- lots of input there we flew over and uh so many times and we had to play because you know with the ihf rules you have to you know, once you once you want to play a national team, which was the plan, and uh, you have to go and play in a national national uh, in championship, the yeah, in the league. So we played so many games there in different rings, and uh, obviously for the playoffs we went there. So my brother and I would travel back and forth just to play games and come back. Go back to Germany. Well, I was traveling. I had to work. So I was working. I was playing. I was. I was. You, you were flying. You were going back and forth from Israel to Germany. Yeah, sometimes once a week. And the team's paid for that? Who's paid for that? Come on. It was, uh, well, Israel for the, uh, Israeli hockey is not as, uh, how I say it, can afford it, everything. So it was lots of, lots was coming from our, of our pocket. Yeah. So, like, and you wanted to build Israeli hockey and you've been dedicated. That's great. Definitely. No, it was a great experience. I mean, you, you know what? One thing I learned, uh, 
even if it's Israeli championship or you go and play such, like you say, North Korea, how they play. And I had the same questions before. Yeah. But in any level, even if you go outside your your house and you organize a championship in anything, it takes something to win it. Oh, yeah. Because everybody wants to win it, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're yeah. all sportsmen. You have this enthusiasm. You want to win. You want to win. You have to be the best. Even at, at any kind of level. Whatever you're going to do in life, though, whatever you're going to do, you may as well do it the best and be the best, right? Exactly. You want to be the best, and if you're not, you're, either you can do anything about it or you have to realize what you can do better. So, so how far of a flight is Germany to Israel? Four and a half hours. Yeah, that's far enough. Yeah, it's okay. But at that time, there were good... Uh, Good connection. It was a straight flight. Now it became a little different, uh, but yeah, it was okay. So, did you guys get after it after you won the Israeli championship? Good time. Say it again. Did you have fun after you won the Israeli championship? Though? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. For us, it was like you said, it was more ideal thing. We needed to do it technically and stuff, but uh, for we obviously were all the better players there. Of course, we made the made everybody happy around us, and it was great success for most of those guys who play there. It was maybe the fir the first and last championship they win, but but for me also it was just fun to win it to to enjoy enjoy these moments and it was cool like I said. Yeah. So, so but became, that's but that's why you don't when I see now you just do the national team. It's because you'd have to exactly. fly back and forth to do that because your life is in Germany. Yeah. Exactly. Once yeah exactly when when the opportunity is there and we see it and we talk about it yeah but you know yeah. So. Being named the captain of Israel would have been pretty neat, eh? Being named the captain yeah. of any team is pretty neat, but of your of a country, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I was really honored with that, and uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, something not only being part of it, but leading leading yeah. the guys. Yeah. Um, but I do it uh, to be honest, uh, not to. No, I don't. I don't want to sound arrogant, but I do it with. Uh, I I hope I hope with uh, really lots of passion and uh, lots of um, input. You know. Wow, well, and so, you see, you 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 seem very passionate about Israeli hockey. You seem very passionate about hockey, and I've played with you. I know what type of team guy you are. That's why I asked you to come on without even knowing about any of this. It was because of the person you are. I know you're a leader, so yeah. Um, you don't have to, f you're not being arrogant or whatever. Don't worry about that. No, no, just... This is a podcast. You're actually allowed to be proud. You know, I never said anything about anything I've done until I came to the shed. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I try not to tell anybody in real life only in here. Right. <laughs> so what's your favorite Israeli meal? Falafel. Falafel. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That, those are good. Like with yeah, tzatziki I have falafel, on it. I love the bed sauce. I don't. It's not even like the main course, but you know, it's it's all I need when we come to Israel and whatever. You know, when you get that, I know it's a little place in Tel Aviv when I always get it. It's nothing special, but I love so it. You there. got your little honey hole where you go, where you like you like I the falafel. There, I, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, an old Yafo city. It's just at the corner. You just go there, and I walked there last time. I didn't even get. I had to go around, but I said, you know what? I go there, I park the car, I walk for twenty minutes because there was no parking. And I get it, and I enjoyed it, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, they, that's cool. So while we're on the topic, <laughs> what's your favorite German meal? It's a good question. Man. The Israeli was quicker, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Germany, I I really like the food. I that's why I got fat, and they asked me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of things I probably can can eat, you know. Like I like meat. I like you know, like nice nice. I enjoyed the time in Bavaria and, you know, when you go to Oktoberfest. Actually, I changed my nutrition now, so it's hard to tell what I like now because now it's more, you know, when you're Are 41, you, you have to keep the shape. You're being healthier, eh? You're not getting into the schnitzels as much? I was a big schnitzel guy. <laughs> no, yeah, I know, I know. I love it a lot. No, Kalb schnitzel is great, you know, when you get it with a, with a, with a nice salad there. and uh, I also I also don't have to play in the world championships this year, so I could eat what I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So actually, I look after. I look after it right now. It's just since a couple of years, and yeah, you want to, you know, you want to have fun. But, when yeah. at our age, you have to take care of your body. If you don't, you know, it's not. I just have to. Not, I just have to talk to people in my shed. That's what keeps me in shape because I laugh enough. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, okay, so you also played in the Continental Cup three times. 
Israel yeah. gets into the Continental Cup then. So is that when you win the championship, then you get into the Continental exactly. Cup? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So how uh, goal, how it that was it three times? I thought it was two times. I, I don't know. Three no, times anyways, it looked like. Yeah, we won two times. Through the ah, actually, yeah, it was three times because one time, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, but that's a neat experience. I played in it once uh, in Denmark. Uh, we actually hosted the tournament, but then we didn't do yeah. very well. So it wasn't that great of a memory, you know? <laughs> uh, Bulgaria. Uh, there was good, yeah. There was twice in um, twice in Bulgaria and one time in um, in Belgium, yeah. That's right. Bulgaria too, eh? You've traveled, yeah. man. Keepers. <laughs> okay, poster picks before I get into Germany. Uh, what's the one where you're at? There's a fountain behind you guys, but you're with all the guys. Is that team Israel? Which one uh, is it? Uh, it? There's like seven dudes. I need my there's like seven dudes with all your, oh, yeah. you're that's in an a, oiler oh, that's shirt. Last, that's, a, that's creation. That's guys. That's, uh, we went for a while where the day off in Zagreb last year. Zagreb. That's, that's the that's town it. where everybody that plays for Croatia is from now. Every player on the team is exactly. from Zagreb. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. That's a nice that's town right. I hear. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we enjoyed the time there. Yeah, it's cool. Um, okay, so then the the picture of you with a goalie in Dusseldorf, if I could tell that's your I've been there. Um, is that your nephew then? Yes. Okay, so he's a tender. He's a tender, he's 10 years old. And uh, yeah, he's in, he's enjoy he's really enjoying hockey. And um, I think he's a great goalie, and we'll see if he works hard, he can become yeah. a great one. Oh, that's cool. Um, and the reason I've seen the Dusseldorf arena is because I went to visit big, sexy Justin Kelly when he played for Dusseldorf, where you played with him in Krefeld, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's nice right. arena there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then I guess the picture on the ice with your brother. Oh, no, a- no, 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 Sorry. I have to correct you. That what? picture is made like two or three weeks ago. You might know it from Augsburg, maybe. It's in Augsburg. I went with my nephew to That's Augsburg. That's Augsburg? That's Augsburg, man. Well, maybe I That's got Augsburg. fooled because he was wearing the Dusseldorf jersey. Because there was a, my nephew had a tournament there, under 13, I guess, or under 11. And they have a tournament there, so I went there. Because that was my first team I played when I was apart from home, when I was 19. So I joined uh, that uh, weekend with him. Well, that's anyways, cool. I've never been to the Augsburg Arena. I thought that was Dusseldorf. No, 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 no. I might have been drinking when I went to the Dusseldorf right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was off that weekend. Dusseldorf has a nice one too, yeah. Dusseldorf has a nice one. Uh, okay, so then there's a picture of you with your brother. Uh, there's a few of them. Your brother must mean a lot to you, and you guys get to do all the stuff together. And then you work together too? Yeah. So he's we'll all right the- there. And you're twins, right? And we're twins, yeah. So. But he's what? He's big. Yeah, I know. He's a big fella. Like you're not small. I gave, He's I gave big. Him, I gave him. I gave him 50 minutes uh, before I came out. Oh, so. he was already that much bigger in 50 minutes. <laughs> it, it, it gave him a little bit. Um, so there's a picture of one kid on his knee and another kid on, or he's holding a kid and you're holding a kid. So those are your two kids then. So he's got yeah. one then. He that's his nephew. Uh, that's my nephew. That's his son. Yeah, and I got uh, yeah. my daughter. Okay, and then uh, what else do I got? The Panthers game where there's Barkov in the background on the arena. Is that when you go for the Israel tournament then? You're just there. Exactly. That's from November. Was I think it was November, yeah. It was November in uh, Florida. So because we were invited to the – there was uh, an event in that uh, place. So we invited, so we kind of made a nice picture. We thought it's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good one. Um, and then uh, – the Stars of Israel uh, poster pick where you're wearing the C as the captain. Those are nice uniforms, eh? Yeah, I like them a lot too. Yeah, I don't know good. who's making them. It's good. It's, I, I like I like that uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, like I, um, and like the colors go with the flag, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and when you say that your brother's going to be coaching in Iceland, I just saw this now. Is we did just have our 78th country listen to the shed uh to listen to two L's and hockey tales and that was Iceland. So welcome Iceland. <laughs> you know? Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> and now all the places you go, geez, we might end up getting more places, right? <laughs> yeah. Um okay. So Germany, you moved there as as a nine year old, get into hockey. So then you sign your first pro contract. It seemed like a one year deal in the Oberliga with Duisburg and you're about what? 18, 19 years old? 
Yeah, 18 and uh, exactly. Uh, it was this, you know, remember this fur license stuff where you yeah. played the DL. You that's the like DL a, practice. that's an affiliate is what we'd call it here. An AP. Yeah. Affiliate yeah. player. So you can play both teams, right? Exactly. So I was, uh, well, was the whole season with Krefeld and played in Duisburg. So you have to practice with the DL team as well? I play, Yeah. In the morning I practiced with them. I did the preseason. I practiced with them. And uh, in that time it didn't happen that they, they called me up, but I practiced with them. And uh, at night, I practice with the Oberliga team and play with Oberliga. Busy times, eh? It's a lot of hockey. Yeah. Uh, but so you that... know, when, you're, when you're 18, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you want to that, at that age. <laughs> it's not like you're busy. You're not but, busy. Yeah. Um, which is weird, like, for my kid, because he is so obsessed with hockey right now, man. The kid is, uh, like, I've never told him once to shoot pucks. The kid is in the garage shooting pucks nonstop. I, like, I can't stop him. Uh, but, like, they only got two games left now and it's, it's sad. Um, and one little tournament and then his season's over again. And like, you can tell he's not ready for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you have ice all, all year, no? Well, he's going to play spring hockey, but that's not with his normal team. Right. So he's going to be on different tournament teams, right. Where it's, okay. it's all fun, but it's not your team. Right. <laughs> not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Not the same. It's not the same as being on a team all year and practicing together and grinding out, trying to win a championship together, you know? Yeah. So the next year you went to Augsburg. So then you do get DL games. You also play in the German fourth league and you play junior hockey all in one year. Right. That's what the research team found. That's uh yeah, I, I, I know that's uh, it's, it's quite incorrect because we played that. They had a team, the young hunter, they played the Oberliga at that time. It was, like preparing team when Biden played Coaster Z, it was pretty pretty decent uh, league for a young team. We had a contract. There were like five, four or five guys um, who played there. We we were all playing in a DL, and once we had a like whatever like a day off or or there was no games in the DL, we practiced with the DL. We were fully on the DL team, but we also uh, joined the team. Uh, you see on the games there, it's not too many, but we played in the Oberliga to support that team. It was a good concept, actually, because uh, we were the leaders of the team with 19, 20 year old. We had to play against really good players and good teams in Oberliga. And the Bavarian Oberliga at that time were like Oberliga Zoo. It was very they good, right? Tough. It was good league. And they'd have some imports too, right? That, like, they had they, imports. They yeah. had like Czech guys and stuff like that, like Canadian guys. Uh, I remember like teams like Biden or... Um, Closter C and stuff like that. Yeah, team. I know some players that played on those teams. I don't know back then what it was like, but you know, now that I'm back in the hockey world and like I know people, an agent told me the Oberleague is paying now, like imports, like they're paying. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Finally. Finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. Um, it's interesting because like I've talked I've never really talked about this, but when I went to Germany f- as an import, I guess in 2007, um, I heard of what guys were making around the league and it gradually decreased every year in that league almost like, but there'd be the few teams that pay. And then there'd be a big block of teams that really weren't paying guys that much money anymore. Once they found out they could bring guys over for tryouts and then they could just send them packing and bring in a new one. Um, it really, yeah. uh, and then they found some guys that would come over on the tryout, and then they found some gems like Greg Squires, you little punk. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But like, then they find a guy for cheap, and then they're like, well, let's do that next year. We don't need to pay the guy that's, you know, done it before. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the different, different philosophies. Yeah. I, I don't really agree with this also, but, you know, they're also on the other hand. And there's so, good, there's good so example. many imports out there, right? <laughs> like, yeah, there's so many imports out there, and you have to see that when they, once they give you a chance, I guess most of guys who are coming over, maybe it's still now like this, uh, they see it as a, as a chance. You know, when you finish college and you play ECHL, wherever, like, you know, and then uh, you have a chance, you come to European League, and all of a sudden you play a sec, let's say it's second league or whatever, Uber League. The best example for like, whatever, like, uh, who is the like Moloch? Do you remember Moloch? The brothers? Yeah. Yeah, 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 you played in Essen and Uber League, and all of a sudden you played, you ended up playing. Berlin. Uh, Berlin, <laughs> yeah. and then they played national team. I mean, it's not yeah. bad. No, yeah, you can make a one career over year, there. One yeah. year in the Uber League, maybe not well paid, but one year, 100 points, and you go. Yeah, no, yeah, there, there is opportunity. You go over there and play well. And you know what? Europe is a different game than North America. 
It's totally different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And some guys fit in better over there than they do in North America, right? But then again, yeah. now I think the North American game is more like Europe than it used to be. Yeah. Right? I, I guess the game changed a lot at all. Like, I'm still working for the DL, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah? Something else. Yeah. Doing what? Well, we do. A, there's a project uh, which is similar or like just the same. Uh, they started five years ago, uh, like in Toronto or Game Center. You know, the Game Center in Toronto, the NHL Game Center, game center where we watch the games? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do here in Germany for the L. Really? Do you decide yeah. if it's a good goal or not? No, I'm not deciding. We're not as, I said, similar. We're not as, we're not as far, but the project is there. And maybe I've seen, we, we, we don't do it, with, but we analyze, we have a, you do, you do the work, you know, like you see who's doing the, giving the assist. It's the right one, not the right one. Oh, so you like get that, the you goals know? and assists right now. Well, you know, sometimes it's the bad for years right? for years in Germany, man. They got the goals and assists really wrong on some teams. <laughs> Definitely. No, that's what I'm saying. That's the game improves. I'll be watching different aspects. You know, you 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 see that you want to protect, you know, you want to do the the hockey operations, you want to do the the um, the um, let's say, okay, you want to protect the players, you know, how the injury happened, you know, was it really by accident, was it not by accident, stuff like that, you know? Yeah, like, and then they get into the suspensions and the player safety and all that. Exactly, player, exactly. The player Just making it more stuff. professional of a league then, too. That's why the L became, or becomes now, I think, three years, also the game here changed. It's real good. I had the game yesterday, the live game from uh, Berlin against Ingolstadt, and it was a really decent game. It was a really, really good game, you know, like you see not too many things. Happened. Okay, yeah, we had one injury there, but you know, things happen. You know, you see exactly was it was it on purpose, was it on purpose, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I never found Germany to be dirty really. I enjoyed playing in Germany. I, I loved my time in Germany. That's all I gotta say, yeah. right? You know? Yeah, I and I did want to stay, you know, like I, I we loved our time there. By the time you're there six years and you can speak German and like you've done it for six years and like it almost feels normal. And like, that's like your home, right? It felt like that was life. Yeah. We lived there eight months and we live in Canada four months or less. Right. And that was life. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah same I, was for me. Yeah. Uh, same was for me, but because I put about 10 years, I was training around. I wasn't in Dusseldorf. I only came for summer. So it's basically the same. And in, like, when I look at your time in Germany, you did like you were at Bremerhaven a lot, which we haven't talked about yet, but you did switch teams quite a bit, right? You were up and down between DL and DL2 a lot. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it was uh, at the beginning, it was because of this fertilizer stuff, which gave opportunities to decide where the player goes or not. And there were times where I decided where I wanna, when I felt great and I didn't want to, you know, be in a DL, convince somebody of am I a good player or not. You know, sometimes you fit in a team, sometimes you don't fit in a team. And it's just a question of, you know, like you say, management, coach, uh, whatever. You know, oh, there's maybe so you don't, much you, to it. Yeah. Maybe you don't perform really because it doesn't fit you. It can also happen. So, yeah. But it was like about two, three years uh, for one team. Yeah, for one club. Um. So, after the Augsburg year, though, you go to Straubing Tigers for two years. And that's back in the second league. And I saw Bill True was on the team way back then. That guy was there a long time, eh? Yeah. It was it was our captain. It was a great guy. Yeah, well, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah I've met him. He is a great guy, and he's always around the Landsuit squad and Straubing squad. He's a legend of Bavaria. But uh, the other guy I saw on your team, just because I think it's funny when the research team gets hot, is just to look at last names, and then I try to figure out Norman Batherson. I'm like, I've heard that last name before. I've, I think I've heard that recently. I'm like, I think there's a guy in the NHL with that last name. And sure yeah. enough, I click on him, and it's his son playing in the NHL for Ottawa. Hey, jeans are a thing, folks. <laughs> it was a great player. It was a great guy, great player. No, no, number 19, I remember. Yeah, he had a lot of points. It looked like a player. That's yeah. the old man. No, yeah. real, really pro, really professional, like super pro. Dusseldorf's a nice city. Where in Dusseldorf are you at? I, like, I just know, like, there's, like, the coast there, like the downtown area where there's close. Nice... We're close here. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's called Nord Nordheim is fine. You know, it's the north west of Westphalia. So we're close to Netherlands. We're close to Belgium here. You know, we're close to that part. It's northwestern part. Okay, beautiful Cologne. spot though, we're Dusseldorf. Close to Cologne and stuff yeah, like I like Dusseldorf. When we went there, Lisa and I went to visit Justin. Uh, it was a, I thought it was a great, cool city. 
It's a cool city, yeah. I like it too. Like I, my family like, loves it, yeah. And then Straubing would have been a smaller town um, in the second league, and that's a nice town too. I've been there too, right? Which nice. one? Straubing. Straubing? Yeah. Straubing is nice, yeah. Well, I was young there, but uh, I really love, love, love the people there every time I came here. It's like 50,000 population. Yeah. Not Very similar to Landshut, right? Where my first stop was in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then the second year there, you get some DL games again with Krefeld and Hanover. So two different teams, eh? Well, actually, I was, if you look, probably it's the same as my second year. In the, in, um, the first year of Straubing, I was on training camp for DL, like with Dizer Long, with Greg Paz. And uh, then I had the first license from there, but I, we decided I stayed in uh, Straubing Straubing the first year. And the second year, I really had a great, great uh, preseason and the start of a season. And then all of a sudden, uh, Krefeld, my junior coach, became, you know, sometimes happens. Uh, um, And he became the head coach for a while, uh, interim's coach, I said, you know, like, because the one got fired and then, you know, he the was intern the coach. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Intern coach. And uh, he called me up because they needed a man. So I had a great preseason and the, the coach in Straubing um, let me go. Kevin Goodett, by the way, was my coach in Straubing. The guy, and, yeah. Uh, he, he was the one that asked me to kindly leave beating him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's and, when I came uh, to you in Hellbrod. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to hear. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah. And he, he, he really, he really wished me luck, and so I uh, actually I was a uh, you know leading D man in, in Straubing, but then he said, okay, it's your chance. You say you should go. So I played for two, ten that games. That is nice for to let you go. Yeah, uh, ten games in Krefeld, and then another coach came, and then um, all of a sudden things changed. Of course, the healthy players came back, so I was about to go, and I called my agent. And I said, you know what, I want to go back. It's more fun there, and I play there. Why I should watch and practice? It was one or two games. I didn't really play a lot, and then all of a sudden the opportunity came, and I moved. To, and I got called to Hanover. Well, isn't hockey more fun though when you're one of the guys and you play more, and like, then being the like the extra guys and like the practice guys? It's not even similar. You know what? It's uh, there is a phrase like this in Russian. Uh, you call it. You want to be the first guy in the village, then the last guy in the city. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, yeah, that makes course. sense you to me. It's like about it's about enjoying. It's, it's about like when enjoying. I got the opportunity to go to the DL when I was with Beatingheim, and I chose to stay at Beatingheim, and it was because like I loved being the guy, and um, you know, if I go to the DL, then I got to prove myself on like whatever the third line and work my way up. Yeah. I'm like, I'm good. I like it here. <laughs> you know, I am totally with you. You got to feel comfortable because you never know. You never know what it would be when you play in the DL, and uh, you know. Well, and those are the decisions that, you got to make, right? But you, you know, it's, it's not. Like, it's not about. It's not about you. You will be the same player, but it does. It also but the so thing is, you I, if looking back on it, I think you always got to take that opportunity because you can always go down. You can't always go up, right? <laughs> you can. Yeah. Uh, don't really, never regret the decision. That's right. Well, you got to just live, right? And yeah. I had a great time everywhere I played. And then, like, that's how I could do this, right? Is I, uh, you, you go to a lot of places, you meet a lot of different people. And then when you do some winning, you know, you, it's it's fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So then after that, though, that's when you kind of, for, like, I looks like three years, you always have a tie to Bremerhaven throughout the year while playing in the DL as well, eh? Yeah, 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 they had the corporation. There. That's the old <laughs> barn, eh? I played in the old barn in Breverhof, and what a spot! <laughs> yeah, it was. But you know what? <laughs> great organization, good people. Besides traveling, everything was great. Good times. Yeah, good well, times. that's that's the travel. So, folks that don't know the German league, Bremerhaven is right at the top, and you got to play the same. Everybody plays the same amount of games as each other. Back in the day, it was four games against each team in the league you'd play, right? And Bremerhaven never had a short trip, did they? <laughs> no, no. You are basically leaving your home uh, for 24 hours. You bus there for oh, about 10 hours, folks. You get off the bus, you play the game, you get back on the bus and bus all the way home, and it's literally 24 hours. And yeah. like all the other teams in the league are like, oh, when's the Bremerhaven trip? <laughs> And forever hoff has got to do it every weekend. <laughs> There's a funny story about that, if I can tell. 
Yeah. Uh, when we were in the second league, uh, we were went to we won the championship, the regular one, went to playoffs, and we played Straubing. That's because Straubing moved on, uh, moved up to the DL that season. We're playing finals against them. So we were playing, let me remember properly, but we were playing at home. Uh, and we were playing on the road, we were playing home on the road. And then and obviously we won, so we had the fifth game. And it was 2-2. And we were won- we lost both game home games, the first playoff games. It was best of five there, and um, I don't know why not best of seven, but whatever. Yeah, don't and, get uh, me started. We lost the five in Castle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, but we won on the road. So the coach and the management made made a great great decision to make a one hour bus trip to for the last fifth game at home. No, because you got, so we feel like we're on the road. So you played at home, but you got on the bus and went for an hour ride. <laughs> Just before, so I have a feeling. Jump off the road, jump off the ice, off the bus on the ice, and there was a you know, just funny story to tell. But we lost two one, by the way, two one. <laughs> so we lost uh, the final game two one. It was really bad, but it was funny. Yeah. Um, like so, for folks from Canada that are like and the UK that may find this interesting. My funny story of traveling to Bremerhoff. And if I could tell this <laughs> um, is I'm with Lance It's the last game of the season. And it does not matter for our team. We're locked into, I think it was second place or something. The game doesn't matter. The last regular season game. So we get there and we got some time to kill before warm up, And a few, the handful of the German fellas are like, Waldo, let, come with us. We're going to go for a walk before the game. And, um, well, um, they took me by the, uh, what are they called? The poof houses, right? Where there's, uh, say someone standing. Red, at the, it's, called, it's called red light, red light. District. Red light district. That's what it's called. And we went for a walk through the red light district before the match. And like being from Canada, you don't see that all the time. And I was showing up to a hockey game, ready to play. And then the fellows walked me through there and I'd never really seen it. Right. I, it was a memorable day. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Thought it was entertaining. <laughs> it, was go, good, it, it was a funny pregame walk. I've never been on one <laughs> like that before, right? <laughs> you get prepared. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was one of my you funniest. Can, you, can, you can, at least you can refocus. <laughs> it was just, yeah, because I'd never seen anything like that. But so other guys you played with, though, I want to bring up was when you went to Hanover during that few years in Bremerhaven. Um, you played 48 games the DL one year. Stefan Robitaille was on that team. Played with me at Beatingheim for years. Oh, yeah? He's a beauty. Great. Yeah, yeah. he's a good D-man. Now, like, he was 42 years old, and he still had it. And he was playing as an import. And we talked about how many imports there are in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Yeah. So smart and, you know. Smart, so smart smooth. Most skating, yeah. skating, skating abilities and stuff like this. I mean, yeah, good athlete, good. great athlete. Yeah, that's what keeps you, keeps you uh, in the game. And then another name that Canadian listeners would like to hear is Todd Warner played with you in the DL. He was a Leaf legend back when they were good. I know, I know, number sixteen. So he played with Hanover, there, right? and I know the stats from Hanover. I remember only Hanover. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, um so then after that you go you sign in the DL like full time it looks like 2007 8 you start in Hamburg and end up in Duisburg for a year and a half eh yeah yeah it was a uh... just curious question when you're signing these deals is it a big difference between the DL and second league as a german for money wise i don't well definitely yeah it's uh if if you, they charge they charge they 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 pay the Germans differently, but there's a I guess there's a break even, you know. It's like like you complain kind of about the, the imports playing and getting chances. The same that's the same guys. The worst thing for a guy, uh, my experience is uh, maybe it changed now. I don't I'm a little out of it. I don't know the market right now, but uh, when you you know when you it's your junior team, your talent, and you sign the same club, it's the same team. Yeah. They give you a chance. Yeah, I made I made in Krefeld 250 day mark, my first contract. Not a douche, but you know, I mean, what is 250? I paid my gas to to pay the to, to go to get to the, to the rank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, yeah. but you can't tell it to anybody, kind of, because come on, like, how is a, well, you get your chance, chance, right? Yeah. How is a how is a chance that somebody decides to play become pro? Uh, you know, it's 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 not that it's not that factor. Yeah. But uh, for me, it was a different factor why I did that. So it was okay, and uh, uh, I thought I, I thought differently about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's two thousand. What was it? Ninety nine, two thousand. But uh, when you call, of course, like when you go to the L, it's different. Yeah. Well, and then, like, bonuses, yeah. You know and then there's stuff. the team. Bonuses. It's the same in all those European leagues, though. There's also the teams that pay the high end dollars yeah. or euros. <laughs> and then there's the, the bottom teams that like for me, when I'm getting opportunities to go to the DL from the second league, it was on those lower budget teams that were offering me basically the same amount as the second league was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree with it. Okay. But, you know, in the DL, you get those bonuses and stuff like this, which you usually don't get in the second leagues. You know, once you perform, when you have success, the DL teams, the DL clubs, they have more more financial um, solutions that, for these things yeah. that the second league teams offer. Bigger sponsors, bigger cities, more opportunity yeah. for bigger sponsors, right? Exactly. I mean, you can compare You can compare yeah. such, such... It's to, like such the NHL city, like the Hamburg. AHL, right? I'm sorry. It's like the NHL, the AHL. Like yeah. there are guys in the AHL making good money, right? Um, but yeah, no, yeah. I got you. So why when you start 2007, eight? That's so. This is where I actually am moving to Germany. I'm in Landshut. Um, so you start in Hamburg, and uh, you switch to Duisburg. What goes on there? I had a bad start in Hamburg. Uh, to be honest, I switched there. Uh, was a I thought it's a great chance. Uh, I mean, it's a great place to live. I mean, Hamburg is a beautiful city. Uh, and, uh, great, I've been there a uh, few times. It is a great city. You're I right. mean, it's a great city, but also everything around sports, you know, everything's done. You feel like you're in NHL. They, took, they, they were in this Anschutz group, like Berlin and LA Kings. This Anschutz group, you know this one? He's so, a, uh, a person that owns all that, right? Berlin, yeah, yeah, LA exactly. Kings, and yeah, 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 they yeah. had the Hamburg team. So they had Hamburg Freezers, you know, and it was a great, great thing for me. But I started really bad, and I had uh, in, in Copenhagen. I and, and um, well, first of all, I got uh, some infect when we went to a training camp, and secondly, so I had to fly back from the training camp to to just to rest. I got some virus, whatever. I couldn't practice, and then uh, we went to Denmark, uh, uh, to Cop- yeah, to, to Copenhagen, to Denmark, and we played uh, a tournament there, and I got a bad. Bad, a bad, bad cross check against my head, so I got a bad concussion there in the game. Oh. So you know, it kind of throws you out of a couple games on the preseason and stuff like this. You don't really get a spot. Well, and, and when you was, and when a team's kind of starting the season, right? The coach might not know what the lineup's going to be, not where the D are going to fit, what the PK is going to be, the power play is going to be. And when you're missing those games where the team's finding out what exactly, it's gonna, yeah, that's hard to then miss, get into it, right? I, I missed the bad, yeah, yeah. It was a bad, just really bad timing, but whatever happens, yeah. happens for a good reason. Uh, finally, I ended up uh, like Peter Dreisaitl, the father of uh, Leon. I worked with him in, 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 in Bremerhaven before, and then he called me. He called me uh, to Duisburg, and it was a really quick decision. I went to Duisburg, and I had the best year at that time because I had like whatever uh, around twenty points in forty games, and uh, yeah, and the uh, DL that's. And it was a great, great, great season for me at that time. And uh, hey, I don't want to be, but uh, I, I wasn't called to the national team, which I was uh, the first time I was really disappointed about that because it was uh, 20 points most... and 40 something games as a D man in no, the I DL. Had, uh, yeah, like from the old German German defenders, I had the uh, most points. Yeah. But you know, that's the other, that's the other, other, other side of the coin. You know, when you're on a team like that, which is not in the first top spots in the you know on the schedule, uh, yeah, whatever in the ranking, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, and th- th- a lot of times in hockey, for people to get noticed, you have to be on winning teams, right? <laughs> but exactly. um, so you played for Dre Seidel too. I had on the Ravensburg fellas that won oh. uh, the Auslanders, the imports, and okay. uh, yeah, they loved uh, playing for Dry Seidel. And then I found yeah. out that he wears 29 because of Benny Thompson that we used to play against, right? Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's why he wears 29. <laughs> Nine and Swansick, right? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, now. <laughs> Perfectly said. Yeah. He was a great, uh, I, to my to my person, to my mind, uh, I, I really liked uh, to play for him, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I haven't heard a bad thing about him yet. Maybe he'd come to the shed, you know? Maybe. He's in Crayfield right now, so... You can... Is he? Is he the coach, Crayfield, head coach? Yeah. No, he's Jim. Yeah, I'm a Crayfield. Jeepers, he's had a career in hockey too, eh? His son's doing all right too. <laughs> he's okay. <laughs> so and then you played another year for him again in Duisburg, eh? Yeah. And then uh, then you end up back with Bremerhoffen and Krefeld. Yeah, I went um, exactly. That was uh, um, I had an extra an extra year in Duisburg, and um, I didn't. Uh, they went bankrupt, and then um, so I it was at that time uh, any any team in the DL had their German spots filled. So it took me a while, and then the Bremer would call me and say, "You know what? You, you know what you want to do? Want to sit out and see if somebody gets injured, and then jump in? You want to get? You want to be yeah. in, the, in the in the game playing modus?" So I said, "Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a good idea. I like the spot, like I said before." And I went there for actually to be honest, rare conditions, but uh, which was important for me was that I had the option to get out of the contract with any DL teams. Yeah. Uh, and it yeah. is interesting. Once those German spots are taken, they're taken, right? Like it's yeah, yeah. The and the money's spent. Injured. Yeah. Never, and then, never, and then around that transfer injured. period, right? Usually it's after training camp. There's guys that have been injured and they need some players. And then right around uh November, the national team break is yeah. right around where there's some movement again because there's a break, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it happened to be. I did really well. It was a great season there. I mean, I was uh, good on points uh, and everything and it, everything was running well and then Crayfield called me which was my very first team where I signed my junior team it was not far away from home so I decided it's a good chance to give me that year and then an extra year so yeah yeah no that's cool and then so if we're putting this together with my career and yours and we're both in Germany is the time you come back to I've you've been in Hamburg, Duisburg, and then you come back to the second league in Bremerhaven but that's 0910 so that's the year I'm hurt um after the first four games of the season i never play again so i was trying to figure out when i would have played against you for the first time but it wouldn't be that year it would have been exhibition game you may remember this beating heim versus krefeld in krefeld because we went there to play you guys right. right because justin That's kelly right. went to your we team played the old rink. We played the old rink. i don't know what your new rink looks like but that rink was cool <laughs> no there was a there, there was a historical the the original uh, rate but the uh, Kripa played at the time of the arena but it, we played exactly we played in the old ring in the Rheinland that's what yeah, we played and, and I think it's neat that second league teams play DL teams in exhibition because that was the only times I got to play DL teams and then you get to figure out if you can hang with them right and was, I remember when they're when the Pokal you get to play DL yeah. in second league too and I used to like it because yeah. we won some games against DL teams with beating him out of budget you know but you you guys had always a good team. Oh, yeah. We Spe especially at your time. But that's what I find interesting when people, like, look up you know, players and they're like, oh, he's in the second league Germany. It's like, well, our team beat DL teams. Like, we beat yeah. them in real games. <laughs> but is it But is it? Is it so, so like, I don't, I'm not maybe with that big expert but in, in teams now, but I guess there are also some – Great, great HL teams who could beat an NHL team, no? No, I, no. They're the kid. They're, they're the ones trying to get to the NHL. No, it's not the same. No, I know. But if you compare the great, the, the best HL team cannot beat the worst NHL. I don't, NHL? Call, I don't yeah. want to call names. I want to call teams. No, yeah, I don't know. I actually, it would never happen, right? They'd never let it happen. You'd never know. That's what I thought was cool about it, right? <laughs> um, but we did play in that game, and I remember. <laughs> one play of that game. I thought it was cool because so basically I signed back in Beatingheim when I could have left because I knew I could play with Justin the next year. I blow up yeah. my knee and then he still runs a muck and um, ends up signing in the DL. So when I do come back from my knee injury, now the reason I stay in Beatingheim is not there. Justin's gone. But I remember that was when our budget had started going down and we did have some younger players that probably were not ready for a DEL game. <laughs> and i remember a winger got it on the wall i don't know who it was on your team it could have been you hit this kid so hard i thought he was dead man it was wild he got it on the half wall in our own end and just started skating it up the ice with his head down and the d-man came down full tilt <laughs> it wasn't That's funny what... but it was it was funny when he was okay right 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's all about being healthy, staying healthy, but game is game. Yeah. Well, I got the very first practice uh, from a legendary, legendary German player, Thomas Brando. I got a got a hit uh, when I also see only stars. Very my very first professional practice. I just, just came crushed the, you in practice. In practice. Well, it was a wake-up call. I had to put my head up. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's good that I did it in the first practice. My <laughs> first, my first ever game of contact when I was like almost my son's age now, um, like eleven or whenever it started. Um, I, I that happened to me. I picked up the puck in my own end. I turned up the ice with my head down, never playing contact before, and the de- the guy just absolutely annihilated me. I was done so i never played the rest of that game (laughs) (laughs) the head was a little off um but uh yeah you then you never forget that right especially if you want to play hockey at a high level you keep your head up (laughs) you have to keep your head up of course um but you know why we also we played you guys that year in preseason crayfeld against beatingheim is we had alexander selivanov on our team a crayfeld legend right that's right he didn't, he didn't stay long, but man, I enjoyed my time with that guy. He was a beauty. He is a beauty on and off the ice. Yeah. Awesome time. Great guy. Yeah. It was pretty cool. You're in the second league of Germany. You got a guy that scored like how, how many, he had like a, didn't he have like a 30 goal season in the NHL? Yeah. Yeah. Tampa. With Tampa. Yeah. yeah. He's a player. He used to come to Schweine Broughton on Wednesdays with Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so that after that year with Big Sexy and Krefeld, that is when you end up at Hellbron, right? Yeah. So Rico yeah. brought you over. Well, kind of, kind of Rico. It was more. I had, uh, to be honest, I had uh, the last season in Krefeld was a semifinal against Wolfsburg, which were really successful. Was really good. I felt great about it, and um, it was times when I was thinking already starting thing was twenty nine, but. To be honest, at that time I was starting thinking what's how how it's gonna you know where's gonna life. career go you know where it's gonna go you wanna have and your your family business your family business had already started though right they're already rocking at that going. time exactly exactly 2011 we started that's why I was starting thinking what's going on and uh, Thomas Pubish, uh, now our coach from Bremerhaven DL coach uh, called me because I knew we, I played with him before. And against him a lot, and he called me. What do you think? You want to come? It was Dresden, and uh, and Rico called me also, trying to convince to come. So I was thinking if yes or no, what he's gonna do? Because I, at that time, I spent some time close to home, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't really actually wanted to leave again, but uh, my wife was studying at that moment and stuff like this, and I said, okay, still have, you know, let's see how it goes. I heard good things about Harbron, and uh, so I, yeah. Yeah. Well, and Helbron had a good squad then. We had a lot of good pieces on our team when I played there, you know? I yeah. think I thought we could have done more. Um, but anyways. Well, definitely. You yeah. think if you you think if you're leading three zero in the in the series, you can No, that was, that's that's not the year I played <laughs> with you though. That was the year There's before, no you're right. That's There's, when you played with PJ Fenton, right? And then he yeah. Yeah, and then right? No. No, PJ Penn, I didn't play with you. I give Gensy. He was a video guy. Yeah, so it was he a year was before, before that. Game. Yeah, you guys were up three nothing to someone that lost four three in the first round. Eh? Ravensburg, yeah, Ravensburg. Ravensburg. Those Don't ask there. me how that happened. That's tough. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, and then so then after that year um, is when they bring me in. Um, and uh, I thought it was neat how that happened, right? I got it. I got hernia surgery. I'm out for the year. Um, every time I was injured, I always had a hard time with like staying skinny, you know, I got depressed yeah. when I wasn't around the boys and not part of it, but I remember being in the VIP room in a beating hype game. And I think it was the Pokal final actually that we ended up winning and Rico's there and I was having a beer before the game. Cause I'm done for the season. Right. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm done. Sure. It's over. So Rico and I are having a beer in the VIP room. And he's like, well, we've talked about you playing for me before. Maybe now's the time. And I'm like, Maybe now is the time. <laughs> and then <laughs> just like that, we got her done. <laughs> like yeah, I asked Beatingheim, I'm like, this is what they're saying. And Kevin Godet was like, well, I ain't doing that. So see you later. I'm not even, you know, and I, he's like, I don't eat, want you. I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually with Rico, it happened. Uh, it's also funny. Something, sometimes it's just the way it is. Uh, he was my very first coach and the last coach. 
He was your first coach? Where? In Duisburg. He was in Duisburg, Oberliga team. Really? Doug Mason, Doug Mason in uh, Krefeld, and he was in uh, he was in Duisburg. So he was also my last coach. I really, yeah, I I really liked Rico. I thought he was a good coach. I thought um, though he did have some pressure to play the young kids in Hellbron, um, especially that last year. He decided like they were going to penalty kill and play as much as everybody else, and it was like, man, you got all of us sitting here uh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. I don't, I don't really remember as, as well as you. And no, you know. but it, yeah, yeah, you were hurt a lot that year too. But anywho, um, Hellbron was a decent town, though. Like I liked my time there. It's a nice arena, right? Yeah, it was a nice arena. Good people, good quality of life. To be honest, yeah. like yeah. walking around all the. Well, things, that's so. another way I forgot how we know each other. We were neighbors. We lived in the same apartment complex, that's right? right? Yeah, my dog. I always remember you walking all with your dog. Yeah, back up. Uh, yeah. And it was, yeah, exactly. And then it was only like five minutes of a walk with him. And I was uh, like, Avi, that's my dog from there, too. It, you still have time. him. Yeah, he's 14 now. Oh. But I remember now, you, I, I swear, I swear, like I'm here. When I walk out with him and it doesn't take too much because, like, you know, five to 10 minutes and that's enough. I always remember you because you just went out with the Turkish housemeister. Remember him? Yeah. And you just, I take care of that, you know, because he did all his stuff he needed just in front of the door and you brought him back. Remember, it was older. Yeah, yeah. He uh he he ended up passing right off when I right at the end of my hockey career when we got back from Cardiff. Uh we didn't get to bring him to the UK. My parents had him for those hockey seasons, right? Which is sad that we couldn't bring him. But yeah, um he was old I and then that. when he did yeah. wait until we got back and then we got to have a couple months with him before it was time. Um yeah. But yeah, what a dog he was. He was a beauty. But you bring up that housemeister or the landlord, folks. He was a grumpy guy, wasn't he? He didn't. Yeah, he, he was, wasn't enjoying was it, life. He was not having a good day for no, living. No, <laughs> and he has always his cowboy hat. Remember? <laughs> he he would just get. A, he would just find reasons to be upset with people. <laughs> but the thing is, he, he knew every year. The, those three apartments were filled with hockey players. Yeah, he was and, always complaining, and he didn't okay, like it. And it's like, well, yeah. I, I really, I really don't know if we really behaved the right way and they threw the garbage in the right canes and stuff like this. Maybe he was right, but not yeah. the way. Yeah, well, the Canadian it. guys probably weren't always that good at putting the recycling the garbage in the right places and all that. But like, I don't think we were bad tenants. I mean, you know, no, 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 but just the way it is, yeah. And then Sometimes again, then laughing. again, right after hockey games on, say we play on Sundays, Sontag, right? Knocked. <laughs> um, when you do play on a Sunday night and say you win, sometimes fellas get back to the apartments and want to keep having fun, right? Yeah. Let's get that's louder it for a Sunday night, right? But that's hockey. You got to do it. Sorry, housemeister. <laughs> housemeister, yeah. Right? Um, well, so then I guess the, uh, you know, the year we played together, we did get put out by Schwinnigan five games, right? Yeah. Which, hey, small game. world. Remember our goalie, Alex Westland that year? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So he's the goalie coach for the Detroit Red Wings now. I, really? I, I hadn't seen him since and I found out he was and we had tickets to a Red Wings game and Lisa was still friends with Avery and had their number and, um, reached out to him he got me and the kids down to the red wings locker room after the game we got to see the locker room the kids got to sit in the stalls and um that was the first time i've seen him since hell man oh that's yeah. crazy isn't it that's crazy but uh, uh, there was also uh, jonathan bernier Ke- Ke- kevin nasty we had a lot yeah. of goalies that year man yeah yeah, he, Jonathan Bernier, the, right? And then Nastia, yeah. he, he was our starter. He was the guy they signed for the year, but then he hurt his groin right near the start, right? And then they brought in Bernier for the lockout. Yeah. Then they brought in Westland at the end, yeah. right? That's crazy. A lot, lot of goalies, yeah. And that is the year my son was born in Hellbron, Germany. A lot of memories. Yeah, I remember that. I remember you sitting on the bus and checking your phone. Yeah, and then it did ha- – so the – day it did happen was a strange one for me because you went we, to, yeah, actually you went to the hospital after after some game no no what was happening was we were about to we were it was two weeks before the due date or whatever i think and we had a game a pokal game midweek on a wednesday to go somewhere far away and it was two hours before the bus was leaving 
Lisa says it's time to go. I'm like, you sure? Like it seems early. And then it was time. And I missed that one Pokal game um, or a game when he was born. But like, if it would have happened seven hours later, I would have been on the other side of Germany when this was all going down. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. It was, I remember that time. Yeah. I, it's crazy to think that like I, it, if it would have happened seven hours later, I probably would have missed the whole deal. Right. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. 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 yeah I don't think my frow would have been too thrilled. Uh, yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. She loves hockey though. Hey, so I, I haven't asked this one yet. How do you and your wife meet? I haven't heard a love story in a while. You want a love story? Yeah. The shed loves love. <laughs> <laughs> we met actually, we met 2007. Uh, 2007. 2007? When I was in, yeah, I was in, yeah, it was a time when I was in Hanover, just in between Hanover and the summer, between Hanover and Hamburg. And you met Two friends. In- yeah, in you know, Dusseldorf like, well, area. Company, friends that we met in Dusseldorf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had come friends, and somehow we met. Yeah, and then I went to Hamburg, and obviously I came back to Duisburg, so we can spend some. She was the reason I had an easy decision to come to Duisburg back, you know. Yeah, the, because the, she, I, from what I recall, she wasn't really in Hellbronn at all, right? You never saw her in Hellbronn? No, she was studying. She came for. She came for. I, I had it her from me from you. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember if we had met at Hellbrod and like I have, you were my neighbor. I have a beautiful wife. I couldn't show you my wife uh, <laughs> to all the guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I I remember the dog. I was just trying to remember if I had met her, and I like she obviously was busy and wasn't there that often. If I don't, recall. no, no, she was she was really not there. She was uh, she was coming uh, visiting for for weekends. So when we had right. like whatever, had to also you know if we were on the road for Sundays, when they had to also organize. You know, and then, and then you're injured too, right? For a bunch of it too. And so, I was injured. Yeah. You, you don't want to spend time with an injured hockey player, no? No, they're de- they're a mess, aren't they? Depressed, no. sad. No, no fun. No Not fun. Not fun. Therapy, it hurts the worst part of hockey. Rehab for five five hours, something like that. Ugh, no. Puke. And all the boys are out having practice, having fun, and they come off smiling, and you're sitting on the trainer's bench just sad <laughs> yeah and the coach yeah and the coach walks by and when you're ready when you get healthy yeah like give, not, putting the pressure on you like you don't want to play yeah 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 oh yeah, yeah. Always um better. well man i don't know what else i got other than i think it's very impressive um and uh what you've done in your hockey career um and then what you've done for israeli hockey i think is just it's stuff that it's ground roots. It's stuff that never gets forgotten. Right. It's uh, like, I think you and your brother are legends of the game over there and always will be. And, um, but like you had to put in the effort and you get what you put into something, right. You get out what you put in and that you guys were willing to like, kind of put up some money to do the flight back and forth to become able to play for the national team and then to win a gold medal and do the things you guys have done. And now they have a pro league in Israel that now I'm interviewing players that have played in Israel, right. That are from the USA or Canada. Crazy, right? eh? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. You know, when you do something, you have to do it for yourself and for fun. Then with no expectations. When you do <laughs> hey, it- that, you know what? That's exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Not nothing to regret having fun and enjoy it. Yeah, life should be fun and uh, do things that make you happy and do do them right, you know, yeah. and do it with passion. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I can't wait to see uh, how you guys do in the World Championships. Yeah, you can join it. There will be a link, definitely YouTube link uh, for, for the games. It's in seven weeks. Wow. So I will probably jump on my uh, spinning bike and uh, do some later later on. Because I haven't practiced yesterday because of the game. And yeah, prepare myself. So it's how long far away? Seven weeks till Madrid? Yeah. But then you also go over to play with NHL stars before that in three weeks. Is that right? Exactly. Celebrity. (laughs) Yeah, it's a... I have to prepare myself. I need but you, to, know, you know what's what's neat for me on my side of this is I reached out to you just when I saw a random picture about your work at life nowadays, and I got curious. And I'm like, I really like that guy. 
Um, he was a great teammate, a great dude. I wonder what he's doing now. I got to reach out and see what he's up to. And then when I think that you have that type of character, and then I see what you've done after our time together, it's like, ha, I knew I wasn't wrong. <laughs> you know? You have, a, you have the right intuition, but it's I, I'm really happy uh, that you reached out. It's, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. No, seriously, it's so much fun. And we haven't seen each other since 2013. And uh, that's what I love about this. Um, I started this a lot for myself, but also to make memories with my friends and their families. And so people could listen to it, but also what it's done is it's reconnected all my friends. Uh, when I do stuff with a guy from one team, it can get other people talking like, Hey, did you hear Wally's doing this? And he talked to so-and-so. And then all of a sudden my friends all start talking again. And like, man, for a lot of us that like you stayed in the game for the guys that are completely out of it, man, you can. You're almost like that injured hockey player in the season, right? You're having a hard time. You're sad and you miss the guys. <laughs> yeah. If somebody asked me, if we talk about the prof professional if, uh, career time, uh, I guess that's, that's the most, you can ask about emotions, about uh, situations, about wins, about uh, whatever it is. But the most thing you miss, the, if somebody asks me, I say always, I miss the locker room. Yes. But that's something I miss. I want to be, I want to be, you know, like sweating, dirty, whatever you call it. Uh, yeah. Still dressed up, sitting for half an hour. With the guys. Just you hang out in the locker room. Well, and the other part of the locker room that's part of that too that you miss, I'm sure, is is when you're one team for one season and you're going for a championship together and you have all year, you have all those practices, all that sweat, and you come in, you hang out for your half hour before you carry on with your days, but that you do it all year together, all year, right? And you're you're in it for one yeah. goal. And that locker room is very important through that whole year if you're going to do that. That's the office. That's your home. Yeah. That's, and you got to have the right course. culture in the locker room, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. That's something I missed too. That's no. something I miss. I also remember, yeah. Well, um, great seeing you, sir. And uh, we better stay in well, better thank touch, you. eh? Thank you. So thank I you want you to much. send the link when Israel's playing because I'm sure there's going to be some Shed shed fans that want to uh, support the squad, right? Yeah, hey, let's uh, keep in touch. And uh, if uh, maybe you want some uh, interview between games. Oh, hey, it'd be so much fun, man. Yeah. Where are you? You're going to be in Madrid. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, why not? Or with if the I NHL guess, stars. We'll see, yeah, and the NHL stars. Let's chat, man. Let's stay in touch. <laughs> I wish oh, I had oh. more time to do this stuff because there's so many people to talk to. It's so much to talk about in the hockey world, of man. Of course. Of course. Hockey Crazy. world is big. It is. Big, yeah. yeah. Well, great seeing you, All sir. Right. Uh, Guten Nacht. Um, yeah. Have, yeah. Uh, have a good um, Nacht Essen? No. Essen. Abend, 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 Abend Essen, Abend, Abend Essen, okay, you know, yeah, I got a, this is my Mittag Essen, it, yeah, Mittag uh, Essen, yeah, I know, I know, you know, I hope. Are biting. yeah, this is my Mittag Essen, so, <laughs> um, okay, all right, this has been another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Kazi and Wally.